Time now for Give Me the Headlines presented by Hyundai. I do that abrupt transition because uh, we've been talking a long time about these games. We've got uh, two more to go here. Not a whole lot to talk about in this first one, so we'll save uh, most of the time for the second game, which we do have some breaking news about this uh, other game we're going to talk about. Don't look, Chris. Have you seen it? Don't, don't, don't look. Don't look. Don't look. I'll, we'll have you do the noise and everything. First, I let's start it. with – oh, man. Okay. Sorry. Well, Sorry. Right. I man. thought it might happen today, though. Okay. All right. We'll start with the Saints and Browns. Saints defeat the Browns. 17 to 10 is the final score. Your headline for this game is? Fleur, Fleur de Lis don't lose on Christmas Eve? What? <laughs> you can't yeah. Christianity and Catholic on Christmas Eve? Nobody loses like that. We should have known. When you have that symbol on your helmet, you never lose on a day of holiness like that. Even if it is in Cleveland. Uh, so I don't know. That was a silly one, but a hey, good job by the Saints gutting it out and some tough elements there and uh, beating the Cleveland Browns, who, you know, kind of been on a win streak and, and figured out how to win some games here as of late. Yeah. So it was six degrees. Woo. The winds were like 25 miles an hour. The wind chill was negative 16. It was cold. And so it was one of those games where you figure, all right, whichever team gets out to the lead is probably going to win because the points are going to be hard to come by. It was the exact opposite though. So give the saints credit 17 unanswered points after falling behind uh, 10 to nothing Deshaun Watson, a career worst pass rating in those bad conditions also didn't get a whole lot of help from his receivers Four dropped passes most by any quarterback uh, this week. And so, yeah, it's Browns are in a murky territory right now. Uh, They got to figure out what they, what they got. And and I guess the saints still, still have a chance here uh but they have to win out and the bucks have to lose out for them to win okay so yeah it's uh you know good win for the 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 saints certainly i mean it's ugly like you said it was just a defensive struggle i'm not gonna sit here and lie and tell you i had a whole lot of attention on this football game you know i i knew what was going on um it seemed like cleveland had control and saints kind of put together an ugly touchdown drive And then the big play of the game was, of course, late in the game or the last touchdown set up by the New Orleans Saints. And, yeah, Watson's still not Deshaun Watson. The Browns are playing for next year. Don't even worry about this year. This is just about getting Watson's feet wet, getting your team and culture and things headed in the right direction so you can be legit in 2023. But, yeah, a little unlucky, you know, throwing a slant to David Bell on the left, tight coverage. Ball gets knocked in the air. It's just a hair off target. And, you know, uh, Sorensen did a good job coming down with the ball, left the short field, and the Saints kind of put the game away. It's just that, yeah, that Cleveland offense doesn't have a whole lot to offer right now. You know, they're not extremely explosive in the pass game. I think they're somewhat simplified because Deshaun Watson's still getting used to things. And, you know, New Orleans defense, not as dominant as we've seen in years past, but creative and a pain in the butt still, nonetheless, dominant. And, you know, good job by them gutting it out and finding a way to win. One more game to go. Two teams that have no playoff hopes at this point. Uh, you might have to do a new headline on this one, Chris. You might have to, like, come up with one on the fly here. So Rams defeat the Broncos 51-14, the final score. Chris, your headline for this is? That crap was so bad, we got to fire the coach. <laughs> How about that okay. on the fly? <laughs> if you wanted to see what it's like when we come up with these at, uh, at that moment, that's what, that's what happens. Um, so that is the breaking news. Nathaniel Hackett is no longer with the Denver Broncos. Um, I guess not shocked. I mean, this year went so poorly in a year where their expectations were so high. Maybe an unfair situation for a first-year head coach going into this too. New ownership. They didn't even hire him. I mean, it's just a weird year. So what do you think, Nathaniel Hackett no longer in Denver? I'm not surprised. I'm not. I, when we were watching the game yesterday, I, I was like, this is the kind of game that gets you fired when it's over. Like, even though they probably wanted to wait till the season was over to fire you, you look like that on national TV on Christmas Day. And then your guy that's making quarter of a billion dollars looks like that at quarterback. That's like, yeah, you know, even I don't care who you are. The owners are going to have a hard time dealing with that. You know, even if there is only two games left, it's like, oh, let's just cut the cord and get this energy out of the building and just start new. But that was a embarrassment, a disaster in all levels. 
The defense has been so good all year to get torn up that way. But why did they get torn up? Because the offense was so bad and Russell Wilson was so bad that he let Baker Mayfield in the offense like, hey, here's a short field. Get some confidence. Get some going here. Get a lead so you guys can just have no conscience and just go everywhere on us. It's it's head-scratchingly bad by the Broncos. The offense, Russell Wilson, the way he looked. It's it's. It's unbelievable at moments where you just go, is this year one? Is he a rookie? Did he play college football? Or is this a guy we've talked about being a Hall of Famer? I just, I've never seen anything like it, Amon. So is this a good job? Is this a good job for a head coach out there? Can they, can they lure? I mean, there's only so many head coach openings every year, but you're supposed to have all the pieces in place here, but it certainly didn't look like that. Where does Denver go from here? I I still think it's going to be a pretty appealing job. You know, I think the big thing is, is just that head coach, is he going to be comfortable with Russell Wilson? And, you know, the things you hear about him as a person and a player and all those, and do you think you can make it work? But, I, I mean, as I look at it, I still think there's a lot of positives to talk about as far as the roster is concerned. You know, offensive line, that needs to be fixing. You know, they'll get Javante Williams back. We know the receivers are good. The defense is damn good. So, yeah, I, I think this will be a, a pretty appealing job that, that coaches are definitely going to want. But, yeah, there's going to be that pressure looming over this about you have to correct Russell Wilson. We're stuck with him for the next four years. And, you know, that, that, that could give some coaches some trepidation, at least the ones that maybe have their, their pick of the litter and have some other options – where they might go, I don't know. I don't know if I could fix this guy. So it'll be interesting to see. New head coach, Daryl Bevel. They're like, hey, you did it before. Just figure it out again. Just make it work again. You know, you, <laughs> How'd you make you, it work? Whatever you did before, just do that again. Uh, there's more to talk about with the Rams here. We're going to have to talk about that another day, I think. Because I, I think at the end of the year, there's going to be some interesting things with Baker Mayfield. Like, is he part of this team? Cam Akers. Um, just real quick, Chris, you know, 10, 20 seconds. You know, Rams, big win in this one. What, what did we learn that can go into next year for them, maybe? Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, one, you see Baker Mayfield can still make throws and plays as a quarterback, and then he's got starting caliber traits, and he's a starting quarterback in football. Uh, the Rams, say what you want. You know, that's one thing I love about McVay. They're another team. No matter what, they answer the bell. They come out. They hit. They play hard, right? Their defense is still stingy. They, they're not that far off. Cooper Cup's healthy, Cam Akers healthy, you know, the rest of the receiving core is there. They got to obviously probably infuse another receiver at the position to improve that group a little bit there. Hopefully Allen Robinson can be a little bit more of a, a, a have a more of a presence this year. I, don't know, I, I wouldn't be shocked to see the Rams make the appropriate moves and re right back in the playoff conversa conversation next year with, the, with uh, out there in LA. I wouldn't be shocked by that. That was Give Me the Headlines presented by Hyundai. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.